Good morning, good morning. Good morning, my friends. Rolling strong up in the Tesla chopper. Going to meet my girlfriend over here at the Hilltop Hotel. Going to meet my girlfriend for a little bit of early morning action. Oh, got a couple dogs off to the port side going at it. Right, let's see if we can find her. She's around here somewhere. Baby, you see my girlfriend? Morning. I'm just kidding, folks. I ain't meeting my girlfriend this morning. Cause I got wife number two on board. Baby, say hello. Isn't she looking beautiful today? We got wife number two. We got a little Force G on board. I took Maria and Mercedes to school, but you know what? Get the, I'm not gonna win dad of the year award because I forgot her snack and her drink. <laughs> I dropped her off. Oh no. I gotta go get her snack and bring it back. Sometimes, folks, little things like that. You slip your mind. Damn, ant biting me. Woo. If that's the worst thing, that's the worst thing I do today. Yes, I can't complain. So that's how I'm starting out my morning. Just an early morning, little trike ride through the beautiful jungle area mixed with good old garbage. <laughs> early morning garbage. Folks, I don't know where this video is going to take us today. I really don't. More garbage. Wow, that's the first time I've seen that vulcanized in the shop open over there. So folks, I go into 7-Eleven, and I'm such a nice foreign dude, that I bought the old lady, I bought the old lady some pita spread, okay, now it's called, uh, well, it's spicy tuna, I don't know if you can see that, but I got her some spicy tuna. You might think that uh, peanut butter or cheese or something, I don't know. Now she's not down with a spicy, but when I saw the word tuna, it's got fish flavor. Oh yeah, she gonna eat it. So I go in there, I get her a pack of crackers like a good rich foreign husband that I am. And then she's eating those crackers and then sees the banana lady. It says, give me 20 pesos. Well, immediately when she says, you know, give me money, I can't hear nothing for 30 minutes. Just my body shuts down. My ears don't work for 30 minutes. Morning. Morning. So, I pull out 20 pesos. You know, again, rich foreign husband. I give her 20 pesos. And she sees them bananas and they look so good. Whoa, drag the bottom. Then she says, give me 50 pesos. Now, I didn't actually hear her say that. I just read her lips because I'm deaf for 30 minutes already. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't got 50 pesos. You just took my last 20. She got her banana. And I'm trying to figure out, baby, how did we go from 20 to 50? Can you explain that to the viewers? How did we go from 20 to 50 when you were staring at the bananas? What happened? Huh? Maybe that's a huge banana cube. Oh no, that, that's too expensive, baby. Those are hundred each. Some cheap what? <laughs> cheap what? The funny man, I have observed and noted that, that you started using some fam family, non-family friendly language on my show. Why is that, baby? You're getting a potty mouth. Yeah. I didn't teach you that. I didn't teach you that. I've taught you nothing but love, respect. 
What? Folks, when you're driving the streets over here, you got to take it slow. Oh, the dog is really going to bite me. These like dogs will jump out on you, kids will jump out in front of you. My goodness. Go, go. Hey, girl, how are you? All right. Saw one of my girlfriends. What? Dude, you know I like them older models. Whoa! Off road. <laughs> Me and her going to date every morning, baby. Yeah, dating next school. <laughs> Sampagita Street. Let's see what's happening on Sampagita Street. Not much happening. Clark, then. Remember, I brought you here once. Remember we were in the swimming pool? Clark View Residences. See, we're coming up on the backside of Horizon Tower One. Now remember, baby, I, I used to live up over there at the Horizon. See that? Oh, wait a minute, you lived there with me too. I forgot that. I was thinking that me and Helen lived there, but you were with us too. Hmm? I've never lived there. No, over there, the horizon. Remember me and Helen lived there? It's the OGH, O Garden Hotel. <laughs> I gotta spin around and show you that sign, the OGH. <laughs> it's the OG. All right, so this little alley here, leads up to the gate. It's basically creep out behind the petrol station where all these dilapidated bars are. Oh, yeah. Huh? What? What? Yeah. Honey, I have no idea what you just said because you got a mouthful of banana. Look at this girl. Do you want to say it again? Look how big that banana is. That's two bananas, basically. That's two old bananas. And she says that two bananas aren't enough. She wanted, she wanted three, which would make her eating six bananas. My gosh, the stress I'm under. All right, so I'm just gonna creep up here, show you where we popped out. These are all the dilapidated bars. That's the gate. And then right there is Horizon Tower 1, but you know what? I'm not going out that way. Let's go to back up. Whoa! Whoa! We'll head back down this alley here. To the OGH. The Old Garden Hotel. I love it. I gotta show you this sign. Whoa! I can't remember what the name of this place was before. But now here you go, OGH. Nice little oasis back here. Good thing about these spots is they're quiet. They're off of uh, the main drag out there. And that's a bad thing if you stay on the main drag. You got a room on the front side, you hear trikes and traffic all night. So you get one that's like a block back like this, it's quiet, you don't hear anything. So we'll creep down this back alley. Friendship wash and dry, it's commercial laundry looks like. And we'll just keep trucking on this little tour. Ooh, look at that pine tree. I love seeing pine trees. I don't know if that's a Douglas fir call it a Philippine fir something like that but when you stare at palm trees for 10 years all of a sudden a pine tree becomes the most beautiful thing that you see guess we're just all longing for what we can't have because when I lived in the country I was just dreaming about palm trees just sitting in them pines dreaming about a palm tree whoa Hold on, everybody. Let me kick her into three-wheel drive. I'm not gonna get out on the main drag. I'm just gonna snake back through. It's 
snake back through the little back rows right here. Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Smooth sailing on this road. Nara Apartments. Off to the starboard side here. R&J model airplanes. Here the model airplanes. Didn't see uh, what what they had going on, but there's a nice new sign. R&J model airplanes. And we're on Nara Street. And folks, this might not be no exciting walking street video. A million walking street tours, but ain't too many Nara street tours. For rent. Wow, that's a nice little townhouse. Got good security. Got your little carport. Let's see, baby. Let's go. Let's go to the left. Oh, shoot. I brought her back by this Ukai Ukai store here. 100 pesos. And it looks like all that stuff's from America. All you got to do is just read the t-shirts. You know, some of this Ukai Ukai stuff It'll come from Korea or Japan, wherever somebody sends a Blick Bion box over here. But, you know, a lot of it comes from the U.S., from you good folks, sending uh, Blick Bion boxes full of uh, clothing. All you gotta do is read the t-shirts, you know. Just read the t-shirts on the rack and say Reyes Family Reunion 2015. Uh, you know. Smith Family Reunion, Dallas, Texas, 2008. Yeah, okay, it's pretty easy to figure out where the stuff comes from. Good morning, good morning. Whoa! Drag the bottom again. And most of the clothes that you guys send in the Blake Bion boxes, if you're really not choosy about what you send. Hello again, my friends. It just ends up on a perpetual clothing rack of uh, ukai ukai clothes that never get sold. I'm not trying to, to discourage you from sending, you know, clothing over here to your Filipino friends and family members, but if you send if you send a bunch of clothes that are a too big. <laughs> Now this is Captain Obvious, but sometimes you don't think about this. You go to Goodwill and you get a good deal on some clothes or some clearance items, whatever. But folks, if they're too big, ain't nobody gonna wear them. And most of the time, ain't nobody gonna buy them. And they just hang on that rack until they just get faded out. You can go there today and see the same clothes that most of these uh, Ukai Ukai places. You'll see the same clothes five years from now. Um, you know, if you look around here, most people, what, what do they wear? They're wearing shorts and a, and a muscle shirt or a tank top or a t-shirt at best with slippers. And so if you go sending any type of used shoes, people, most, most people in this country, unless they have a job or middle class and up, they don't wear shoes, normal shoes. They wear slippers. So you send a big old box of shoes, they'll take them and they'll put them out there put a big sign up cardboard sign that says ukai ukai and them shoes will be there in 10 years if you don't believe me just send the blick by box wait 10 years and come visit the recipient you'll see most of that shit still sitting there in front of a cardboard sign that says ukai ukai so yeah everybody likes getting a, a uh, blick by box but you have to think about what products do people in the country that you're sending them to, what products would they use? You know, no shit use. What products would they find just exciting to get from America or from your local country? And then what items are you sending that's just gonna waste your time and money? And just be a little bit more selective. Uh, or else all you're doing is I mean yeah like whatever they'll put it out there with for sale ukai ukai but it ain't it ain't you're just moving junk from one country to another 
Look at fucking mind what she dressed in this morning. Usually this is how she dresses to go see her boyfriend. She got a local Pinoy boyfriend. Okay, as long as he buys your uh, buys your rice and your uh, your bananas. What did you want? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were trying to get money. Is that good? Is that delicious? Mm. Huh? You got some on your shirt here. Hold on, let me help you out here. <laughs> come on, baby. <laughs> hey, son. Here, come here, Papa. Pick you up. Come here. Oh, I love you, buddy. Bye. You see the baby? Well, folks, if the rabbits have babies, and there's one of the babies right there, but we they've come out here two or three times, and we keep putting them back in there, and they just wiggle their way out. They're not abandoned. They're not being abused. I mean, when the sun comes up, we'll have to put them back in there, but they wiggle their way out here, and the mama's feeding them. But they're just active little baby rabbits and for whatever reason they they do the roly-poly out here and we got to get them back uh back in the nest up under there but they're they're fine they're just active but yeah so now they can't dig no more digging and now the good thing is is we can see the babies we know when the babies come and the thing about it poor forest g is i was actually suspecting him because we came out here and Force G was over in the rabbit pen looking at the rabbits and I thought he had got the rabbit and put it out here. So I was blaming this dude right here. I thought he was being a little Dennis the Menace. He wasn't the culprit. It was just the babies doing it on their own. Anyhow, he learned something new about the rabbits every day. And we'll, we'll give him a we'll give him a little bit to hang out here, but once the sun comes up, we gotta put him back under there.